presence to be felt among us as we relive those final days of Jesus and his disciples. We pray that this performance touches our souls and deepen our understanding of the sacrifice that was made for us. May it inspire us to reflect on our own lives and in the ways in which we can live out the teachings of Jesus in our daily interactions. We pray for the actors and all those involved in this production that they may be guided by your spirit and that the performances may move us to a deeper connection with you. And so we ask that you bless this performance, O oh Lord, and bless all who are gathered here today. And may we leave this place with, with a renewed faith, hope, and a greater appreciation for the love that you have shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ. In your holy name and in the Savior that made it all possible, we pray. Amen. When I sent you to prepare for this Passover feast, I told you, my time is at hand. I have looked forward to this hour with deep longing. Anxious he to pass the meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now, I will not eat it again until what it represents has occurred in the kingdom of God. I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. No! 
The Last Supper is described in the Bible, specifically in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish holiday of Passover. However, none of his disciples knew that there would be a betrayer among them, and that this meal was the last they shared with one another. During the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it. Then before giving it to his disciples, he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He then took a cup of wine, blessed, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. By referring to the bread and wine as his body and blood, Jesus symbolically offered himself as a sacrifice for the sins of humanity. Following the meal, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. In the ancient world, foot washing was reserved for the lowest of servants. It was a dirty and unpleasant task, yet Jesus willingly took on this role to serve his disciples. By doing so, he demonstrated humility and service that showed Jesus' love for his followers and a lesson that no task is too lowly or demeaning for a leader to undertake. Furthermore, Jesus' act of foot washing was also a symbol of spiritual cleansing. As he washed his disciples' feet, he demonstrated the importance of humility and the need for spiritual cleansing to be part of God's kingdom. This act also showed his disciples to follow his example and serve others with humility and love. Many of you know me in Park Holland. Like many of my friends here, I'm a fisherman. Born in Canada, Galilee. I still remember when Philip told me about Jesus. How can anything so great come out of Nazareth? It's such a small and significant place. As you know, so it can be quite persuasions. And he did take me to see Jesus. When Jesus first laid his eyes on me, he said, Ah, it's an Israelite with no hair, no guile. I said, How do you know me, Jesus? He said, Before Philip brought you here, I saw you. You were praying very deeply under the fig tree. At that moment, I knew this was the Messiah. The Messiah I've been praying for. So saying I followed him. Through the villages of Galilee, I saw him turn water into wine. All through the streets of the Catalyst, and now here in the holy city of Jerusalem, where Jesus begins a new feast. And he tells us that one of us will betray him? It's hard to understand. Is it I? No. Is it I? They call me Simon the Zealot. I was associated with a bunch of bloodthirsty, hot headed rebels known as Zealots. We feared and hate the Romans and will do everything in our power to remove Rome from our beloved land. I live by the sword, and if not for Jesus, I would certainly die by the sword. And then one day I heard Jesus say, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be known as the sons of God. And he also said, Forgive your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you. Since coming to know Jesus, I have unconditionally surrendered to his will, and I will follow him wherever we may be. Through Jesus, one day we will restore our land back to the glory that God intended it. I have seen Jesus conquer evil with unconditional love, and I know what a sword love can be. With love in my heart, I can overcome any adversity that I might face. Now, Jesus says there's a spiritual woman among us, someone who would attempt by force can only be counted with blood. Who could that be? Matthew the publican, or maybe 
Peter think Bishop? Or does Jesus think it's to be Simon, the former self? Is it I? Is it I? My name is James. I'm also known as James the Lesser. Our families and I are brothers, and together we saw the Master on the day Jesus was being baptized by John. After Jesus was baptized, I, I turned aside for a closer look, and I saw Jesus asking John to baptize him. After John, after Jesus was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove, and the mighty voice spoke, Behold, this is my son, and whom I am well pleased. I tried to follow Jesus. Jesus later asked me to become a disciple, and I tried to follow him as best I could. Later, I, uh, my, my father, I followed him as and his heavenly father as best I could. And now one of us is to betray him? Surely it is madness to think one of us could do this. And I keep asking myself, is it I? Is it I? My real name is Judas Levatus. But in order to avoid confusion between I and Judas Iscariot, they call me Thaddeus. Well remember the day Jesus first called me. After a night of prayer, he commissioned us to go forth and preach that the kingdom of God was at hand. He told us he lies as serpents and innocent as doves. He was sending us forth sheep among wolves. A few days ago, Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And I was sure his hour had come when he would ascend to the throne of David. But he has spoken <coughs> troublesome words, and suddenly I see him astride his donkey entering Jerusalem. Not just the king, there's a lamb among the wolves. I fear for our safety. That this Passover feast was held in secrecy. No, he said, one of us will betray him. Spirit wolf among us? Who can it be? Is it I? Is it I?
My name is Andrew. Simon Peter is my older brother. I am not a gifted man. I'm just a simple fisherman. The others call me Andrew the Bringer because I bring others to Jesus. I brought my brother Peter to Jesus and it made a glorious transformation to him. Now we both serve him. One day, I was speak Jesus was speaking to a large crowd and a young boy was carrying a basket that had some bread and two fish. We asked Jesus to pray over it, and he did. And somehow, the bread and the fish multiplied enough to feed everyone that had gathered there. Only the Lamb of God could have performed such a miracle. I have been close to the Master, certainly not one of them in a circle. I only wish to serve and spread the message. Now he tells us that one of us at this table is to, about to betray him. Could it be Andrew the Bringer? Is it I? Is it I? I saw him with you all. You all know me as Matthew. Because of my profession, I have no new true friend, the Lord. One day, a shadow fell across my collecting table. As I looked up, it was the eye of the master. In those eyes, I saw compassion. Compassion I have never seen in the eyes of any man. Trust me, I have seen the eyes of many men as they come to pay their dues to God. <clears throat> Follow me, was all he said. And I left the collecting table. And my life behind as a tax collector and followed him. It was the best bargain of my life. And since then, I have tried to understand how his life fulfilled the word the prophet foretold his coming. I have exchanged my public kind of wretchedness for the dignity of discipleship. I have also tried to write down the exact words the prophet has said. And I also, as I try to write down the exact words, the good news, he tells us the Bible. That one of his trusted followers is going to betray him. Does he suspect me, the former tax collector? Could this betrayer actually be me? Could it be Andrew? Could it be I? Could it be me? I, <clears throat> I am Judas Iscariot, the most trusted of our Lord's beloved society. Perhaps it's my experience with the revolutionaries who plotted against the Romans, which led Master to choose me to follow him. After all, Jesus is the Messiah. He will free us from the yoke and bondage of the Romans. And a new kingdom shall be formed of powerful messianic leaders. And I, Judas, the trusted treasure of this beloved society, I will hold the most powerful position. True, for now I dole out our meager shepherds to the poor, not out of mercy or charity, but because one day I will have them follow Master without question. Now there have been some who have disagreed with me, and I still can't believe the waste of that precious perfume which Mary Magdalene poured over Master's feet. It could have brought many, many pieces of silver under my watchful eye. And yes, yes, Master has shown signs of shameless and weakness. I understand he must appeal to the poor and the downtrodden. And quite frankly, I think some prodding is necessary for him to finish his time. And that is why I had 30 pieces of silver to add to my coffers. And now Master, Master speaks of a betrayer amongst us. And I can tell you with certainty, it did not I, Judas Iscariot, maybe Peter, or those hot-headed brothers, John, and 
James? No, I know my place. My place is quietly manipulating things behind the scenes. One day Master will thank me for forcing his hand, for forcing him to save himself at the last minute like he's done before. No, no, I am not the betrayer. I am the hero at this table. But I'll go along with the others and everyone else and act surprised. I may even ask myself, is it I? Is it I? My name is Philip. I live in Bethesda. Bethesda is right at the foot of the beloved Jordan River because it drains and makes our valley fertile in Judea and it flows into the Sea of Galilee. I was standing there and I cast my net upon the sea because that is how I make my living. I'm a simple fisherman. A simple fisherman that had cast his last net that day when I looked up and I saw two people conversing. One was, was John the Baptist and the other was Jesus. I overheard them and their statements were so filled with love that I asked if I could follow them. And Jesus looked at me and said, of course. I thus became the fourth disciple, me, a simple fisherman. Now, I wanted very much to help Jesus in his mission of ministry as much as I could, so I gave him Nathaniel, and I went to Nathaniel and asked Jesus if he would meet him. And Jesus and Nathaniel became fast friends. Nathaniel became one of the most stalwart of all disciples. Nathaniel was extremely bright, and he helped my Lord expand his, his teaching. The Lord asked me to do a simple task, and I to this day don't know why I had so much difficulty. Perhaps it was because I, I didn't believe him. I didn't trust him completely. He said to go forth and feed the people. And I said, but, but Lord, I have but a, a simple basket of bread, five, five dead loaves of bread and a couple of fish. And I finally went forth and passed my basket in. As Thaddeus said, there was enough. There was not only enough, there was more than enough. Later he asked me if I could find some Greeks to help him understand the other languages. So you see, my Lord spoke of Aramaic. And he came from a small, small village in northwest Syria where Aramaic was the dominant and the only language spoken, the Galilean-type Aramaic. In other words, since the Lord was from Galilee, he spoke a dialect that was Galilean Aramaic. As a consequence, not everyone understood my Lord, so his, his, he was limited in who he could speak to. So I introduced him to three of my Greek friends, and they spoke Arabic, Hebrew, <coughs> Greek, and they spoke almost all the dialects of Aramaic. As a consequence, my Lord was able to expand his teachings to many, many people on many, many places. Now, now I'm told by members of the table here that Jesus has told us that someone will betray my Lord. But only through Jesus Christ can we be with our Heavenly Father. To betray Jesus is to betray God Himself. I could not believe that anyone would do such a thing. Certainly not myself. I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus with all my heart and all my soul. Is it I? Is it I?
I saw him. My brother Andrew and I were out fishing, arguing about the day's catch, as usual, when Jesus walked by. It was almost as if he was looking for us. And he offered us the strangest greeting. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> we had no idea what that meant. But there was something about it. And we actually dropped our nets, dropped our livelihoods right where we stood and followed him. And, and later, he even gave me my name, Peter, which means the rock. And when I confessed him as the Christ, as the son of the living God, he said, upon this rock will I build my church. And yes, it felt good. But I've often asked myself, why me? Why would he choose someone like me, a hot-blooded fisherman with runaway tongue? I don't know. But maybe it's my faith. Because it is strong. When we all saw Jesus walking on the water in the middle of a raging storm, I was the one. I was the one who tried to go to him. Yes, yes, it's true. I, I lost faith, and I began to sing. But I lost faith in myself, not in Him. Never in Jesus. My faith in Him has always been unshakable. Until now. I, I promised I would follow Jesus anywhere. But he warned me. He said that before the rooster crows twice, I will have denied him three times. And then he prayed for me. Because he said, he said that Satan 
wants to sift me like wheat. Will I betray him before the morning comes? And will he then betray me and close the doors of the kingdom to me? Am I just a betrayer that he speaks of? Surely not. It's not possible. I am Peter. I, I am I am the rock. He said so. If I knew who the scoundrel was, I'd pierce his heart with this blade to prove my love. But then what if it's my own heart that I would pierce? No, no, it can't be. Can it? Am I the one? Lord, my Lord, is it I? I've been given the nickname Doubting Thomas by those who know me. Ever since my days as a fisherman with Simon and Andrew, I've always been cautious, careful, certain of my actions. Oh, so often I would uh, demand proof before I believe. I would want to see before committing myself. Truth be told, I'm really not a man of doubt, but rather a man of daring. When Mary and Martha sent word to the Lord that their brother Lazarus was dead, Jesus said, let us go to him. Now, a lot of these gentlemen seated before you here were afraid to go due to the growing opposition to Jesus. But I spoke up and rebuked them all, saying, let us go with them, that we may die with them. Why do you suppose people tend to uh, overlook the daring and remember the doubting, remember the questions and overlook the uh, affirmations? Jesus' enemies are determined to destroy him. Why? Because the God he reveals is a greater God than the petty man-made deities that Jesus' enemies have enshrined upon the altars of their hearts. Jesus will bring us up to God, whereas Jesus' enemies will cut God down to their own size. But now, but now, Jesus has sown doubt into my heart again. As he has just announced that one of us here is going to betray him. Do you suppose he could be thinking me, perhaps due to lack of courage or lack of faith on my part? Is it I? Is it I? I still remember when Jesus first called me, John. My brother James and I were mending our nets on our father's boat when Jesus told them us to follow him. We were so excited, we dropped everything and followed him. Since that time, I've come to understand Jesus through his love. Something very hard for a man of my fiery, petrous spirit but the love of the Master has changed me, and now he calls me the beloved disciple. Jesus once said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Now this is true sacrificial love. He has given so much to us, and like the good shepherd, he protects us and loves us. Some I want to share with the world about our Good Shepherd so that they will know that He is Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, they may have eternal life. For He said, My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me. Now He's just said that one of us will betray Him. Could a sheep betray his own shepherd? 
Is there a wolf in the fold? Surely it's not my brother or Peter or Andrew. Could it be John, the beloved disciple? Is it I? Is it I? I am James, brother to John, and we are both sons of Zebedee. As fishermen, we were very honored when the Master asked us, Come and follow us. Come and follow us. We have been known as sons of thunder due to our anger and our raging spirit. When in the presence of the Master we have witnessed many things, many miracles. We watched as he healed Peter's mother-in-law from her fever. And at once she got up and waited on us. He raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. But the most miraculous thing that I have ever witnessed was when we were on the top of the mountain. And he was standing there with Elijah and Moses, speaking with them. He transfigured before me. His face shined like the sun, and his clothes turned as white as the lightning. Our mother urged us to ask Jesus to sit at the right and the left hand of him, in which he responded, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink from the cup in which I am to drink? Or be baptized in the baptism of which I am to be baptized? You shall drink my cup, he said, and be baptized with me. Jesus demonstrated to us that by being first, one must be the least, as he has demonstrated to us by washing our feet before this Passover supper. And now, our loving Master has told us that one of us at this table is to betray the Master of Love. How can someone betray love? The one who has taught us to love is to be betrayed by one of his beloved? Surely it is not my beloved brother. Could it be? Matthew? Or Thaddeus? Surely it isn't myself, is it? Is it I? Is it I? Master, this is more than my heart can take. I must know. Is it I? The one who dips his bread in the bowl with me will betray me tonight. What you are about to do, do quickly. <laughs> You have stayed with me all through my trials. And just as my Father has given me the right to rule, I will make the same agreement with you. You will eat and drink at my kingdom and at the table, and you will sit on the thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Come, let us be together as we share this Passover meal. We have many memories to share.
brothers and sisters. You witnessed the reenactment of the Last Supper. What we have before you now is the table. This table is set through the sacrifice Jesus has made. Sometimes we call this table a table of remembrance for the living Last Supper. Sometimes we call this table Holy Communion as we come to the Lord to receive nourishment, to sustain us in our mission as we go forth in our faith. And sometimes this table is called a Eucharist. But this table is set not by my hand, not by their hand, but by the hand of God through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. For you see, that night, he took a loaf of bread and he raised it to the heavens. He gave thanks to the Father. He broke that bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. As his disciples were shocked to see what he was doing, he just wasn't finished yet. For he took a cup and he raised it to the heavens. He gave thanks to the Father and he said, This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of your sin and the sins of the world. Take drink and as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me and so we come together as a body of Christ and we pray that the Holy Spirit come to make these elements of bread and vine be the body and the blood of Christ so that we can be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood until we come together once again in feast at his heavenly banquet. I know there's a lot of different faith traditions here tonight. And that's great. Because you see, this isn't about a religion or a particular one. As I said before, this table is set by the hand of God and everyone is welcome. And if you feel uncomfortable coming forward tonight, there's going to be many stations where you can participate and partake in this. If you feel uncomfortable in sharing communion with us, that's okay. Come up for a blessing. Come up for a blessing. Will the disciples please come down and join me?
brothers and sisters we have different stations here we do this tonight by intention this is as we demonstrated you'll be offered a piece of bread you step in front of the child she'll dip that bread and then you'll eat it as I tell my congregation sometimes we forget and we eat the bread before we get to dip it but it's okay it's okay because we have plenty of body to go around amen the only thing that's missing to die is you. Join us, please. Start with the front. Sisters, 
while they're putting this all back to, uh, together, I'm going to have them line up one last time. I'm going to keep playing, Mike. Let's give our disciples a little round of applause and a little round of applause. that I just turned these folks loose. I had nothing to do but other than welcome and this tonight. They did all this on their own. This is all completely laity driven. That's a blessing right there. They've given up their time um, and put a lot of effort into this and it shows. Now I'm going to ask you to take this one step farther. You witnessed the reenactment of what Jesus did the night before he was arrested. Amen? Amen. No, wait. Amen? Amen. There we go. I'm going to ask you to take it one step farther. If you've never been to a Good Friday service or a service, I encourage you to come to us or to your church or to a church where they're doing one. It is very moving, it's very somber, and it connects tonight to the cross. So if you have no place to go, St. John's is a wonderful place. And we'd love for you to be here with us on Friday. And then Saturday, I ask that you think about everything that you've witnessed tonight and Friday. And then ask yourself a question. Where did Jesus go on Saturday? Was he still in the tomb? Where did he go? And if you want the answer, come see me Monday. Or, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Not Monday. Tuesday. And then I really strongly encourage everyone... Go to Easter Sunday service for the final connection. To live the resurrection. Come visit us. We've got free food out front, donuts and coffee. We've got an early service if you would like to, to come and worship and then get back to your family for Chris, I mean for uh, Easter Sunday. And if you want to sleep in a little bit, we've got 1117 service. That's the time, 1117. Can't forget that, right? It's more of a contemporary service. So I invite you to join us or to a church of your choosing. So go from here tonight. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go with grace and go with peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.